What's up, Renegade Nation? Before we begin the video, I'd like to give a shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Silverstorm Forge, Marvin Glassburn, Charday Raider, Sushi Overdose, Saren G. Tiso, Data, Big Geek, Strictly Psycho, Barnard Maddox, Logan Moreau, Eric Smith, Ellie B, Ultra Chara, Amory Dunlap, Joshua Selbishka, Randy Cheney, Fall of Man 20, Sec Clark, Neck, Anthony Greisel, Garrett McKinney, Miss Chris, Arnold, Richard Black, Mr. Happy, Marshall Selden, Tack Cap, Grace Shield, and as always, I'd like to give a big shout out to our executive producers, Joshua Fix, The Gimster 101, Bevan Brummett, and welcome our new executive producer, Vincenzo. Thank you all very much for your support. If you wish to become a YouTube member, click the join button, which is down by the subscribe button down below. And if you wish to check out our Patreon, feel free to click the link down below in the description to find out more. We'll see you there. Oops. <laughs> well, there goes the power. Uh, yeah. All right, open the door. Crack open some more of these. I just hate boxes. Boxes killed my parents. Hey. Hey. Did, did you know? Hey. Did you know? What? JBL beat the fucking shit out of Blue Meanie. Yeah, I heard about that. Oh, God. Okay, here's the thing. <laughs> I I know Adam has covered that about fifty times in various lists that you did back when he was with uh, back when he was with cult, actually before Cultaholic when he was with uh, What Culture Wrestling. Yes, I remember when he was with them, and he covered that extensively, and it was in multiple videos, and no one really knows why JBL beat the shit out of the Blue Meanie. Hmm. All we know is that apparently JBL heard some stuff uh, like, th this is a, all apparent by the way this is nothing confirmed apparently JBL heard some stuff and that was it and, and here's the thing as much of a, as an asshole as JBL is we know this because mm -hmm. him bullying the fuck out of Mauro Ranallo and making him quit Smackdown fuck you JBL uh, also the fact that he is known for literally torturing new talent by like doing very weird shit to them. For instance, like coming in behind them in the shower and soaping their nuts. You heard about that? No. And the thing is, he's just. He, he... And then, of course, JB uh, also apparently JBL is into bodybuilder kind of women because he got he got absolutely flamed when he released a photo of like hit or like it was a screenshot of him watching WrestleMania. Uh, he was just like, watching WrestleMania, can't wait to see what happens this show. And one of the tabs open was, uh, it was this Polish bodybuilder woman. Uh, it was like her name, Nudes. And people flamed the fuck out of oh him over that. Oh my god, I did and, not know that. And it is hilarious. I remember when King Ross, uh, What Culture, was just like, it's like, JBL loves the big sweaty women. JBL loves the big sweaty women. Damn. <laughs> I want to take a picture of that woman up to JBL and have him sign it. Put your name on it, Hoss. <laughs> That's what I want. God. Put your name on it, Hoss. <laughs> also, apparently, uh, him and Joey Styles like got into it. And Joey Styles knocked his ass out. Damn. Well, I mean, JBL's big. He's like 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, He's a big dude. dude. He's also rich as hell. Oh, yeah. And uh, him and uh, him and uh, Farouk, a.k.a. Ron Simmons, Mr. Damn. Damn. I remember you and me at, at that one wrestling show. We did this. He turned his head and, couldn't, and he was laughing his ass nation. off. Of domination. We are the nation. <laughs> you, me, and the man were just standing there, fists out, and then we just, and he just started laughing. <laughs> well, I mean, we, <laughs> we were down for the nation, dude. Well, of course. Plus, in the early beginning, I mean, they're like, every, like a lot of people were in the nation of domination. Yeah, lots of people. Yeah. 
I, I would have been in the nation. I would totally today would sign up for the Nation of Domination. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt about it. And, uh, <laughs> God, it, it's just wrestling so weird, dude. I Re- love it. I, I do too. Well, you're a wrestler, so yeah, you, you're into it. this shit. Uh, have you ever, okay, I'm going to ask you this. Yeah. This is kind of related to this list. Have you ever had anyone legitimately try to hurt you? No. No? Hell no. Okay, because here's the thing. I've heard about, like, whenever people draw the ire, you know, at first it starts with, like, a potato or two, and then a receipt. That, see, that happens. The no, no, that does. potato stuff happens. And, and you it's get a just receipt. Part, well, I mean, do you? You know, I mean, it's just part of the thing. The receipt will come down the line even if you're working right. Because yeah. at the end of the day, you, you try to lay shit in, and you want everything to be snug and, you know, the the chance is always there that something's going to go wrong and it's good, you know, chance that it will. Yeah. So you'll get your receipt if you keep working with the same person and you're doing it right. Shit just happens. Yeah. I mean, like these things do occur, but whenever you work with some, whenever you work with someone new, I, I, Mm -hmm. the one that I heard about was Hacksaw Jim Duggan going up against, uh, one of the guys who was Doink the Clown. Yeah. And Hacksaw, was like literally like had the guy on the ground and the guy was like trying to bite him and shit like that. What the hell? And then Hacksaw like like put his head down on the ground and like held his arm up like he was gonna break his arm. And then there was another one at like one of Honky Tonk Man shows like backstage. Mm-hmm. Dude came back there, started slapping the shit out of this one dude, and uh, he pinned him down. On, the guy got pinned down on the ground, got him in a Kimura like a full like reverse arm lock, and was about to break his arm. And then Honky Tonk Man was like, Whoa, whoa, what the fuck are y'all doing? Get the fuck up. What are y'all doing? Yeah. What the fuck? Who's got the heat? What's the heat, boys? And, you know, you're going to have moments where you're going to have people, like, butt heads. And then, hopefully... You, know, you hopefully, can have you problems. Can, yeah. There's no reason for that to go on in the ring. And when you try to deliberately hurt somebody... That's bullshit. It man. is. It. That's <sighs> bullshit. Because, I mean, you. It's not. it's not... It's nonsense to be that way... People are marks for themselves, dude, and they get mad about stupid shit and things go south because people are fucking crazy and they're stupid as Some shit. Some people can be, yeah. And they're, you know, endowed like a cockroach and they just have insecurities. So, you know, if I'm fucking around with somebody and, like, we're filling each other out and, like, seeing if we can really work together, dude, I want them to feel like they had the night off, this was the greatest thing that's ever happened, we can do something badass without doing way too much and everything's gravy. I don't want a situation where somebody's going to be like, dude, don't ever book them again. They fuck my arm up or this. I want them to be like, damn, that was amazing. I want you guys to keep bringing these people back. Yeah. Because that's how, you know, you get to the point where you're comfortable enough to do cool shit together. Yeah. And and you you want you want to work with good people you want and yeah like, I want to be known the, as a good person to work the, with the times I've seen you work like with like the most work you know time I think you've spent in the ring with with someone was uh was I'd say the Dooley's like you spent probably a lot of time. um Evan yeah the I Dooley's, know Evan your tag team partner probably the the only person that I've had more matches with than Evan and the Dooley's is Jimmy Valiant. Oh, Jimmy V? Yeah. I've had more matches with him than probably anybody that, you know, <laughs> wasn't inside that group. And Yeah. Well, There's Jim, like eight well, matches with that guy. Yeah, and, and Jimmy's always cool. Jimmy's yeah. always down to, like, do as much as he can. He's the man. Even as old as he is, dude. I mean, he still gets after it. As, yeah. As always. But here's ten examples of wrestlers who tried to injure their opponents. And uh. the first image is, of course... Is of course the Blue Meanie and JBL, Damn. which evidently they buried the hatchet. Well, apparently, well, no, apparently they've they have, but it it still sucks that it happened. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Because Blue Meanie looked like he got his fucking face like ran through a meat grinder. Yeah, dude. he got fucked up. Yeah, and of course, uh, actually Stevie Richards, who's like Blue Meanie, one well, Blue Meanie's best friend, got JBL back about a week later, hit him legit with a chair. Like on the on the post on the end, gave JBL a concussion for yeah. it. I mean, well, receipts like we talked about, dude. Your boys will have your back, man. Exactly. So, here we go. Let's see what happens.
Listen, I'm not going to put JBL and the Blue Meanie on this list. I can't talk about that one moment in wrestling history anymore. You can't make me. So, wrestling, the awful business we all like. When it works the way it's supposed to, it's a beautiful dance between two ambassadors ah, yeah. of flesh. Da Vinci's of destruction, Vince's, Prince's of big nerve pinches, seemingly horrible violence mitigated by cooperation. Wrestlers having each other's backs with systems in place to make sure that no one hurts themselves for super realsies. Of course, sometimes accidents happen and people get injured, and that's obvious bad, but sometimes, thankfully a much rarer sometimes, those injuries aren't an accident. They were all part of a diabolical plan. Strap in, let's talk about some of the worst moments oh, of God. unprofessional dick the Here are ten wrestlers who Strap tried match. to injure Yapapa. their opponents. Number ten, Koji Katao. Starting with his Oh, oh I know this one. This is uh, him and uh, WWF John Tenta. WWF was in co-promoting a show with Japanese promotion Super World of Sport. A match was booked between Earthquake, aka John Tenta, who's yep. previously been popular in Japan, against Koji Katao. So this match is super weird and a bit scary. It's not two lads twonking each other with patio furniture. Instead, it's a weird standoff occasionally broken by Katao trying to legit gouge Tenta's eyes. See, apparently, Booker for SWS Great Kabuki had told Tenta to stiff Katao a little because of some personal animosity between the two. Katao loses his rag at this, stops wrestling entirely, and just starts trying to blind the man sharing the ring with him before kicking a ref and proclaiming that wrestling was fake before getting immediately sacked. Way to go. Good job. Number nine, Manny Fernandez. This Ooh, one is really no. weird. Is this the one where he takes up? Maybe graphic, uh, but also perhaps yeah, work. the invader. Also a hint of conspiracy revenge to it. So let's try and unpack it. So it's oh. 1988. Yeah, I remember this. The Puerto Rican promotion World Wrestling Council. If that name and year sets off alarm bells for you, and you're not sure why, that's because that's the year that Bruiser Brody was murdered backstage. And Manny Fernandez was his best Council friend. Show, allegedly by Jose Gonzalez, aka Invader yeah. One, who attacked him with a knife in the showers. Now this match apparently has Invader taking on Manny Fernandez in his Raging Bull persona. During the match, Fernandez hits Invader with a jumping knee to the midsection from the top rope, which apparently caused his stomach to rupture with blood spewing from his mouth. But then, Fernandez proceeds to hit Gonzalez with two further knee drops. Here is where it gets confusing. Some have maintained the whole thing was a work and that the blood was get this pig's blood mixed with vodka. However, some are adamant it was a shoot, with Fernandez himself swearing in later interviews that he intentionally injured Gonzalez as revenge for him allegedly killing Bruiser Brody until you dig deeper and you find out the match between Raging Bull and Invader happened two months before Brody was killed and that Raging Bull wrestled and injured not Invader 1 but Invader 3 who wasn't played by Gonzalez. What? It is such a mental story. Number eight. Yeah. We've met Manny. Yeah, he's. I've, I've uh, been in the ring and trained with him a little bit a couple times. Went to Florida and with him hung yeah. out down there and yeah, that's uh, a crazy story, man. Yeah, it is. And in truth, I I would love to pick his brain about Bruiser, but at the same time, no, I, I don't know even him, know if I would broach the subject. Yeah, and, and for me, I know that the, for for him, that's still probably a very sensitive yeah. subject. Because I saw like the Dark Side of the Ring oh, video yeah. about Bruiser Brody, and that man was God, dude. Yeah. Holy shit. The Acolytes. Is there a company more oh God. hot new talent than Wh WWE? Which one? I'm public in, Enemy or the Dudleys? Shoes. Which I'm one is it? Please tell me it's Public Enemy. I've heard so much about you. We're going to f***ing batter you for yep. it. Give me back that cookie. <laughs> Before the Dudleys became known as the Wizards of the Wicked Wood, that gimmick was actually synonymous with a different tag team, Public Enemy, who made brutal and often use of tables. Johnny Grunge and Rocco Rock. In 1995, both WWF and WCW made offers for Public Enemy to sign with them, and they chose WCW. Big mistake, lads. When their three-year contract expired, they jumped ship to WWF in early 99, to which the locker room reacted with Mariah Carey's I don't know her. So three bad <laughs> things happened before public <laughs> three enemy. Three minute warning. Damn. One of the most infamous matches to take place in WWE history. A beat, a beat down. Public enemy had snubbed a WWF in the past. Down. They had been brought in by Terry Gordy, whom the acolytes hated, and the public enemy tried to change the finish of the match at the last minute, not wanting to be put through tables so quickly into their we're good at tables run. Oh dear, oh no. The acolytes were instructed by management to make sure the finish happened and were otherwise given free reign to shoot all over Public Enemy. The rest oh, is horror. Some God, of the chair shots dude. pressure hits like it's legit violence. They're not just trying to hurt them, they're trying to run them out of the company. It's really gross and Public Enemy were indeed gone within a few weeks of this air quotes match. Number seven. The fact that Rocco Rock and Johnny Grunge are both gone, it, it, sh it still like chills me a little bit with that because you gotta think, dude. They have been through, like they... Like, like the the amount of shit that they went through in that match alone, 
Must have shaved some years off their life. Oh, yeah. That I, shit can be devastating. Even if shit goes right, it can be devastating. Yeah. There's some people I've seen, like, you and I both, like, we work with, with Mook. Yeah. And the thing is... Well, no. <laughs> uh, here's the thing about Mook. I will never doubt that man's toughness. Mm, he's ne- tough. And never in my life. And the thing with him is, like, there was a, a dude you and I both knew... Sick Rick, mm-hmm. who thought I was trying to rib him, and in turn he smashed Mook through my ta- the table that had my shit on it, and about broke my monitor, my friggin' audio setup here, mm-hmm. same ones I got here, and he thought I was ribbing him, and I'm like, like, yeah, I talked to him after, and he was just like, how come you didn't play my music? I'm like, dude, James told me to play that. What do you want? Why are you coming after me, man? James is the one that fucking like 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 spun my wrist about that shit. Yeah. But yeah, it again, dude. There's some people who just think that the world is against them, and they're trying to like they're they try and like overcompensate for that shit. Mm-hmm. It pisses me off sometimes. Yeah. But yeah, it. Thankfully, though, like that's really like the only few times I've I've ran into that shit. It can happen. It can. Just, <clears throat> I just stood back and I was like, well, <sighs> thankfully nothing broke. Add Santal. So this incident didn't happen during an official match, but instead during a sparring The almighty dick too kick. too damn interesting not to talk about. Way back in the early days of pro wrestling, we're talking turn of the 20th century here, Frank Gotch and George Hackenschmidt had one of the most talked about rivalries of the day, with Gotch winning their first encounter and the World Heavyweight Wrestling Championship, the first ever wrestling championship, despite Hackenschmidt alleging dirty tactics like excessive body oil over the rank scandal of it. Turns out wrestling hasn't really changed all that much. Years later, their rematch was set for 1911, and it was instantly a storm of controversy again. Hackenschmidt went into the match claiming to be fighting fit, but actually had a knee injury he received in training, which Gotch used to get the easy win. However, after the bout, a wrestler called Ad Santel told Luthez that Frank Gotch's team had paid him $5,000, which would be equivalent to over half a million today, to injure Hackenschmidt during a sparring match Ooh. and make it look like an accident. This all happened mm. decades before promoters tried to get Iron Sheik to break Hulk Hogan's leg. Wrestling's always been just a Stand up industry. Number six, Daniel Puder. When you start working, oh, you it's important this is where he tried to break Kurt Angle's wrist. If I've learned anything from Daniel Puder's book, How to Succeed at Business, it's try and break the army of bosses. <laughs> Step two is three. That was a Cross. shoot. 2004 and the fourth season of Tough Enough, aka Who Can Get Their Boy Scouts Wrestling Badge Competition. Hello, <laughs> Tiny Miz. During a November episode of SmackDown, Kurt Angle was putting the new recruits through their paces, challenging one of them to a match during which the Tough Enough shoot. competitor actually had some of his ribs accidentally broken. Broken by Angle, so a nice scary start. Fab. Angle challenges the rest of them, a challenge accepted by MMA trained five head showcase Daniel Puder, who proceeded to snatch Kurt Nakamura and refused to give. Angle scrambled to force a botched pin because, according to Dave Meltzer, he would have been, quote, in surgery if the hold had been applied for even a few seconds long. I will show you a video after this of what happens when you don't tap on a Kimura. I'm good. Okay. As you can imagine, backstage were less than thrilled, and Puder was punished with a prison yard beating in front of an audience of millions when locker room enforcers Guerrero, Benoit, and Holly ruined him in a 2005 Royal Rumble. Sweet Jesus. Number five, Antonio Inoki. And all you oh, can is this one with the great Antonio? The chinniest chin to ever chiru in the form of Japanese uber legend Antonio Inoki, the man who founded New Japan Pro Wrestling and booked himself to be its top star for decades. Wrestling never changes. To be honest, though, you're not exactly going to argue with him, are you? Because Antonio Antonio Inoki has been in a number of infamous shoot fights in his wrestling career and has a cast iron reputation of sending condolences to the families of those who don't comply. In 1976, he thought Akram Pahal won, and when his opponent wouldn't comply with the match booking, Inoki locked him in a double wrist lock and just straight up broke his arm when he wouldn't tap. Slightly more famous is Inoki's match against Muhammad Ali, where he lay on his back for most of the match trying to injure Ali's knees with stiff strikes for being uncooperative during the match's build. And finally, his most infamous disciplining against the great Antonio. Yeah, the head kicks oh on this one. Oh my. For reasons both unknown and incomprehensible, during their match in 77, Great Antonio stopped selling Inoki's offense. So Inoki simply said, 
OK then, flipped his internal switch from kayfabe to real life before knocking Antonio to the mat and repeatedly kicking him about the body and face until he was a bloody mess. Number four, Akira Maeda. Yep. Sticking with New Japan and their hair trigger shoot lunatics, let's talk about another man liable to see red and make red, Akira Maeda. Much like his boss Inoki, Maeda has a handful of wrestling matches gone wrong under his belt. One saw him take on Andre the Giant. Mm. Story has it that Andre had been instructed by Inoki himself to discipline the hot-headed Maeda, so when the Giant stopped cooperating, Maeda got furious and repeatedly went after Andre's legs until unable to stand the pain any longer, the Giant lay down and demanded to be pinned. Maeda is no joke, but yet even more brutal than that was a six-man tag match, pitting Maeda with partners versus a team including Ricky Choshu. This match also fell apart when, apparently incensed at Ricky Choshu big leaguing him, Maeda kicked him full in the face while he was applying a submission oh, while the wrestler a total shoot the kick broke two orbital bones in Choshu's face oh, and remarkably God. he didn't even fall what did happen next was a match being completely abandoned as both men had to be separated by their partners trying to stop them coming to blows again damn Japan you scary number three Yoshiko damn, damn Japan dude. you oh, scary this one. Oh, like God, dude. Talk this, this one is just straight up no fun we're talking I would yeah, Here's I've seen the, this. Yeah. Match in February 2015 that's so infamous that it's referred to in Japanese wrestling as the Saison Match or the Ghastly Match. When you consider the horrors of Japanese death matches, that is fucking saying something. The match yeah. saw Akshu Zakawa taking on World of Stardom champion Yoshiko. The two stars had heat prior to the match with Act having accidentally bloodied Yoshiko in a past match who was also a hot and up and coming young star. It's difficult to pinpoint exactly what happened as no one wants to talk about this match, but it's believed that Act accidentally hit Yoshiko with a closed fist and Yoshiko. Yoshiko just went insane, shooting on Axe so much he broke her cheek, nasal, and orbital bones. Oof. The match was mercifully called off in under eight minutes. Awful, awful stuff. Yoshiko mercifully in eight minutes. <laughs> in mercifully a... eight minutes. Jesus. God, it goes if, okay. on forever. I don't know if you've seen it, but it uh, yeah, is I've seen fucking it. awful. It's like, the, yeah, Yoshiko, a, here's the thing. Oh. I am like as adamant against hitting women as anything. I got no no problem drop kicking this bitch. You you just got to get that thing away from you. Period. Jesus. I mean, Jesus Christ. Terrifying. Go watch the video and you'll yeah, see. Yeah, you'll understand why. God. You're retiring. She's still wrestling today, fun fact for you all, whereas Act is now retired from the industry. The darkest point in Stardom's history, one that saw one of the company's founders, Nane Takahashi, actually stepping down. But it still didn't draw quite as much press as this next oh. Oh. Number two, Sexy Star. Oh. Had a shoot on a fellow wrestler and intentionally try and injure them, doing it on pay-per-view during the promotion's biggest show of the year. Oh, yeah. Smart. Fair in consideration. Don't seem to be Yo. words in Sexy Star's vocabulary. At AAA's annual Triple Mania show in 2017, a fatal four-way was held for Sexy Star's Queen of Queens Championship. Also in that match was Rosemary, one of Impact Wrestling's most recognizable stars. During the match, something bad happens. It's unclear when, but at some point, Sexy Star gets tagged for real, and she completely loses composure, locking Rosemary in a shoot armbar, wrenching her shoulder out of its joint. Then after Rosemary had tapped out and broken free of the hold, Star grabs her arm again and locks the armbar in one more time. Wrestlers and fans alike around the world were outraged, with Road Dog calling for her to be blacklisted, and Cody Rhodes saying that she never set foot in one of his locker rooms. Being banned yep. from the two biggest promotions in America is smart going. And number one, JBL beats up the blue. I'm not doing it. Number one, <laughs> because he has admitted oh. to trying oh, to kill God. a wrestling match. Like, is this the one where he stabs the dude? Jack has made a solid case or is this, uh, or is this like Gypsy Joe? The wrestling biz, mass transit incident, Gypsy Joe incident. But this one is his horrible oh, yeah. masterpiece. During an ECW pay-per-view in Danbury, New Jack was wrestling Vic Grimes in a scaffold match. Miscommunication happened between the two, leading to the infamous Danbury fall, where both men clatter to the concrete with Grimes accidentally landing on Jack's head, oh. killing it. New Jack holds Grimes Judges turns out when some very dumb promoter for extreme pro wrestling decided to capitalize on that controversy by booking a feud culminating in another scaffold match between the two, Jack went in with evil on his mind. The story goes, and remember this is New Jack himself saying it, that at the top of the structure, New Jack legit tased Grimes before throwing him from the scaffold. New Jack claims that his aim was for Grimes to land on the turnbuckle and die, but thankfully he landed on the ring ropes instead, still suffering multiple injuries but living to wrestle another day. Wrestling everyone, the one Wonderful world of sports entertainment. Merry Christmas. And that's our list. Feel like we've gone too far with this one. Merry Christmas. Subscribe to us before we're demonetized. Oh, oh God. I hurt. I hurt too, man. I, I mean, what too. more is there to be said about that? Jesus Christ. 
Fucking hell, man. Yeah. Well, it, at the beginning, it was just like, oh, this is rough and not good and mean. And then it just at the end was disgusting. Yeah. Those three there at the end. Uh. It's like, deli- like, okay. Uh,. Shining Star, I remember seeing that and just thinking of her sexy star, sorry. Sexy Star. Uh that happening with her and I was just like, Mm -hmm. fuck. You know what they didn't include? The guy who threw the brick. Yeah. Juan Cena, I believe Mm -hmm. was his name, chucking the brick at the back of the guy's head. And the guy like I I don't know like what the full extent of his injuries were, but I know that he was hospitalized for a long time. Yeah, he was down and out. And Juan Cena at that point, like, here's the thing. At that point, <clears throat> I would be trying to get the boys in the locker room together to go out there and beat oh, the fucking yeah. shit out that dude. You got to do something. Yeah, because... He used it as a gimmick. Yeah. He was getting booked with pictures of him, like, holding a brick and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck that, dude. Fuck that. Tried to kill someone. Like, that's, like, again, <clears throat> that's the shit that people always put and hold up against the wrestling industry yeah. it's just like oh it's just a bunch of people like hurling bricks at each other's heads it's like it's the same shit that mma had to go through it's just like oh it's human cockfighting it's like get the fuck out of here this yeah. shit like this shit is literally like performance at, at so like it's people performing at the highest level some of the greatest athletes ever i mean hell i, I was just like watching the other day uh, it was Ron Simmons versus Big Van Vader when Ron oh, Simmons yeah. won the world title. Dude. Ron Simmons, a FSU standout, two-time All-American, played in the NFL. Same thing with Big Van Vader. Leon White played, you know, played for the was it the Denver Broncos? He played he, like he, I don't know. I think it was the Rams. <clears throat> Did he play for the Rams? Let's take a look. Let's take a look. It's Vader time. There it is. Yeah, Leon White, rest in peace there, big man. Yeah, for Six, real. five, 450 Jesus. pounds. He played for the Rams. Yeah. yeah, okay. He was born in Colorado. Okay, yeah. that's what it was. That's, okay. So, yeah, he was an All-American as well in 77. Uh, uh, and then Ron Simmons, of course, you know, he he's thankfully still with us. But Ron damn. Simmons. Damn. 62 years old. FSU standout. And again, you wasn't know, he the uh, first African American world heavyweight champion? Yep, first black world heavyweight champion in uh, in WCW history or in uh, world and uh, wrestling history, I believe. I'm yeah. not, I'm not 100 percent on that because uh, I know. Man. Oh yeah, dude! Like, still an awesome, like an awesome personality, even after he's been retired for so for so long. Yeah. So, again, dude, I, I. I look at stuff like that and people talk shit about wrestling and it just makes me just cringe because it's these people don't know what the hell they're talking about. Right. It's people who are sitting on the outside, see a select thing and decide just to talk shit about it. Right. Like, it, it, they don't even want to even talk about learning, well, you know, who the, you know, what the storylines are, what the, you know, who this person is, what their gimmick is, anything. You know, they, they're just going to write it off as just dumb, stupid redneck entertainment. Right. Versus Japan, where they take Or redneck this... anime, they call it. Yeah. And then, of course, you go over to Japan, and they fill up the Tokyo Dome every year well, with Wrestle Kingdom. Well, not last year because yeah. of COVID, but... <laughs> not last year. Or this year, actually. Or this year. But there were people there this year. But... Oh, yeah, yeah. So, but that's cool. Again, man, I mean, it's just one of those things that just... it. You're gonna If you're going to talk shit about something, at least put forth the effort to attempt to understand it yeah, versus I, I think a lot of people that speak on it are are looking from a way outside perspective yeah but you know I, I do understand the legitimate crops that people have against it it just is what it is if it's not yours then go find what is yours yeah I agree yeah. I agree entirely man but all right I guess that's gonna do it everyone this was uh, 10 wrestlers who tried to injure their opponents. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, this was by uh, Wrestle Talk. Uh, go check them out. Uh, link to the original video is in the description down below. And as always, I guess until next time, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Chad. We'll see you then, everyone. Peace out. Oh, yeah.